How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a audio visualizer for the entirety of your song. A lot of the Blender tutorials on YouTube don't show you how to do it to the extent to the extent of the song. And I'm going to show you a really cool graph editor trick that'll really come in clutch for these type of audio visualizers. If you want to get the project file you're seeing right now, you can get that in the description for a dollar. Everybody on Patreon, you'll be getting that on all three tiers. If you don't know about the Patreon, I give out weekly project files from my studies and projects. I release several exclusive tutorials a month. I also released a breakdown on how I created this scene before I did the tutorial for it. So I showed my process and all that. I also released a really quick speed art video on how I modeled and made this scene right here. I also released 10 procedural materials a month with Syncratic 3D. So we have the wood pack, the glitch pack, the iridescent pack, and coming this month, I will be releasing the metal pack. And you also will be getting 50% off on my latest release, which is a hundred looping animations all the project files for those animations so you can go in, learn some motion design stuff and use them for your own projects, things like that. So with that all being said, let's get into this tutorial. So just to show you guys what we will be tackling here, we're gonna be making all these cool little fractured objects. We're gonna be creating this little object here and I'm gonna show you how to make a really cool loop. So I'm gonna go and file, new in general and don't save. So first off, we're gonna make all those little fractured objects and I'm gonna do something that I call the box method just to make sure that it does loop in the end. So shift A, I'm gonna get a plane and I'm gonna hit S8 and this is gonna be the size of our loop. Our, our camera will be remain within the bounds of this little box thing. Now to keep it out of the way visually, we're gonna to go to the uh, this object properties right here on viewport display, we're gonna to go to to uh, bound, so now we only have the bounds of our uh, cube. So that kind of stays out of the way just as a visual so we can see everything staying correct. Now, let's go ahead and get an icosphere. So let's go right here and then I'm gonna hit the period key to go closer. I'm gonna subdivide it, give it all the way on smoothness and give it 10 cuts. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, first off, you need to make sure that the cell fracture add-on is enabled. So you just go here and type in cell and you will have object cell fracture. Click the little check mark, and then I'm gonna go and hit F3, and then C-E-L-L, cell fracture objects, just like that. I'm gonna keep my source limit at 100, don't wanna have too many objects. I'm gonna go from volume here to uniform, and then I'm gonna give it a recursion of two, and then I'm gonna press OK, and it's gonna do its little fracturing, and it's doing all the little recursions now. Okay, so now it's done. I'm gonna delete the outer shell. And so now we have this really cool fractured thing. I'm gonna go here and just highlight everything. And then I wanna spread them across this, uh, this cube. I mean, this little plane here. So I'm gonna go to object, transform, and randomize transform. And what that's gonna allow me to do is as I play with the uh, location here, it's gonna stretch it out. And I'm gonna make it kind of double the size of this. What I don't want it to do is to go past this direction because this is the direction the camera is going to be going. So then we're going to take the Y location and again, keep it within the box. So just like that. And then here on the Z, make it pretty big. Just something around the lines of this. So now we have a bunch of little fractured objects that we can go in later and bring in closer, bring in farther. I'm actually going to uh, maybe bring them in a little bit. So something like that. Okay, so now we have all of our fractured little objects that we're gonna go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight everything just to I'm hit A, just to make sure everything is selected. I'm gonna hit M to add it to a new collection. New collection, I'm gonna call it rocks. So, oops, misspelled that, but doesn't matter. Um, so now we have a new collection right up here. You can see in your outliner, all these objects. And then what I'm gonna do is to make sure that this is going to be a seamless loop is I'm gonna hit Shift A collection instance, perk, perk, perks, <laughs> whatever that word I tried spelling. And then what you do is you hold control, then hit the green arrow and it'll snap into the grid and make sure that these um, planes are selecting, which is why I call it the box method. So as long as these guys are touching, not like that or not like this, but that, when you run your camera through it, you will have a perfectly seamless loop. So that's what I'm just gonna do here is duplicate these guys and go in and make a bunch of these. So there's a reason why I did this specific thing. So I'm gonna go to the front view and make sure any objects aren't gonna be in the way of my camera. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, so for those of you who've watched my loop tutorials, you'll know, we'll run the camera, we'll run the camera from here to here and then that'll be the loop. And because these are instanced, they're exactly the same. And when you press, when, when the, 
when the uh, camera goes back to the beginning, you won't tell that the camera went to the beginning. It's just a seamless loop. The issue with audio visualizers is this is like generally five seconds. So what would you do? You'd have the uh, the song playing and then you'd have just an endless amount of these instances that the camera would go through. That's really impractical and depending on the length of the song that can be extremely long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a trick where you can keep the camera within this five second interval, but it stays within more than just 120 frames, which would be about five seconds. So if that didn't make sense to you, I will show you how it works. So first off, I'm gonna hit the tilde key to go to the front. Shift A and add my camera, and then we'll go and hit Control to snap him. It looks like it'll be on negative eight. So now we have this. Right now you can tell it's super duplicated, but as we design the uh, the uh, design, you it, that'll that won't be so obvious. So what are we gonna do? First off, let's animate it, and I want to animate it to um, forty right here. So what I'm gonna do is hit the back arrow to go to frame zero. That's super important so you don't get a duplicate frame. I'm gonna hit this right here and then go to uh, frame 40 and type in eight. And as you can see, it's a seamless animation uh, outside of the ones that disappeared. So if we press play right here, you'll go, and then that's the end of the loop. How do you, but what I'm gonna show you is a really cool graph editor trick. So I'm gonna go here to animation, and then on this one, I'm gonna hit the uh, zero key to press play can't see anything, I'm gonna click on the camera. So now we're in the graph editor. So I'm gonna show you the little modifiers within the graph editor. So I'll go from here to graph editor, click this icon here, and then right here, click modifiers, and these are gonna be keyframe modifiers. So it's within the graph editor right here. Add the cycles, and what that's going to do, if you watch right here, as we go, we have 250 frames, but the animation only consists of 40 frames. So this cycles modifier is going to keep that motion going throughout the entirety of however many frames we want to add to our animation. So you can just keep it going endless amounts and it'll just keep going and going and then we'll just add more duplicates here. And what the benefit of that is, you can add in your song, it's really long and you didn't have to make a thousand uh, little duplicates here. You can only run the camera through just one of the instances and now you have a really long animation. So what I'm going to do now that we figured that part out is I'm just going to go ahead and start designing this a little bit more. Then we'll go ahead and add in our, an add in our objects and then make them react to uh, music. So I'm going to get my first object here which is an icosphere and we'll give it four subdivisions so you can bring it down. So I like it up to here to four and I'm going to do some fancy uh, stuff here so add modifier add decimate here decimate modifier go to planar and then bring your angle limit up to something like something like this and then we're going to add in the smooth modifier and bring the repeat up so now we get this really cool uh, almost turtle shell looking like pattern in our uh, mesh now we're going to go ahead and add in the displace and we'll click new and i'm just going to go and pick the distorted noise texture but it doesn't really matter on this one you can do whatever texture you like and then the last thing we're going to add is a wireframe and then we're going to make it um pretty thin let's go to the rendered view we're going to be using ev for this so make sure you are in the ev render engine i'm going to go here to shading remove that new we're going to go and get an emission material i'm going to make it a nice blue and then make it pretty bright so now we have this object right here, which will be reacting to our music. So let's do that really quickly. So what I'm gonna do is go to the object right here on the uh, displace modifier here, insert keyframe, right click and insert keyframe. I'm gonna switch this to the graph editor, go from key, bake sounds to F curves. And then I'm gonna go and pick my song, which is this uh, fairly small one. And so now you can see, well, it kind of disappeared but it is going to be reacting to music. Let me go back to my timeline so you can, I can show you that. And then we'll go back to the beginning. You can see he's reacting to the music. And if you want the music to play in your um, animation, you'll click this little plus icon, video editing, video editing. Go to add sound. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add that song. And so we'll go back to layout. So you know he's working correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that because I'm gonna go ahead and remove that really quickly just because it's a bit annoying and I already know that it's working. So I'm just gonna do that. And so now that we have that going on, I'm gonna do some stuff here with all of these fractured objects by 
So I'm gonna do a couple little shading tricks here. So I'm gonna highlight all this stuff, hit H to hide it, and then I'm gonna hit H on all the stuff except for our fractured objects. So I'm gonna click this guy to do all my uh, editing on him. I'm gonna go ahead, go to the modifiers and add in a wireframe. You can see I'm gonna click even thickness, make sure you do that, and then click replace original. And then I'm gonna bring my thickness pretty far down. I'm gonna go here to rendered view, add in one material, make it kind of half dark. And then we'll go here to the plus icon, click new, and we'll go to the emission material. And then I'm gonna make it the same blue that we made everything else to keep everything cohesive. Material offset of one, so now it attaches that. So what I'm gonna do now to make sure that everything is gonna work with this guy is I'm gonna hit A, making sure this guy is selected first, hit A, hit Control L, link the modifiers that added the wireframe monitor to the wireframe modifier to all of these. And I'm gonna hit Control L and click materials and I added all the materials. So now they all have the same stuff going on. And I'm gonna bring add in all this stuff back. And then if you can see, one thing we need to do really quickly is click on the icosphere, hold down control, click on the camera next, control P and add that object. So now it's parented so it follows the camera through all of this craziness. So what I'm gonna do now really quickly is add in a couple more instances. So something like this, shift D and then holding down control will bring all that, that to the end. That should be enough. I wanna add some volume to add some kind of a really cool foggy effect to this whole scene. But first off, I do need to add in a point light. So the point light will affect the fog. So make it that nice blue, bring up the power. It's not really affecting much until we add in our box. So shift A, mesh cube, S8, and then we'll hit M and add that to the rocks collection. So it adds to everything. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go here to shading, go to rendered view, click new, delete the principled, shift A and add in a volume. So principled volume, put the volume into the surface and then bring our density, just something like this. Actually it needs to be plugged into the volume, not the surface, it won't work unless it's plugged into the surface. So plug it to there. So now we get some nice uh, volume going on, a really foggy effect. And then I'm gonna click on one of these little triangles I mean, one of our fractured objects and make the emission a bit brighter. And so now we have our scene. Now let's hit the, click the point light, click the camera, control P and parent the object. I mean the, the, the light to the camera. And then now if we press play, you get this really cool, really nice audio visualizer that goes into your animation. Okay, so now we have this. I forgot to do one thing, so let's go back here to the video editing tab and add my music right back in here so get the sound. So you can see we have 250 frames, but my song is longer than that. So you need to go here to the end frames and make that match up with however long your song is. So do that, and then we'll go back here to layout. So I'm gonna just take this right here and click render. We're gonna do a little bit of compositing and then we're gonna be finished. So let's go here to compositing and then um, click use nodes, shift A, get the viewer node right here, just like that. We'll get a glare node, plug that there. So now we have a really cool glare effect going on. If it's too much for you, depending on how bright you made your emission material, bring that mix, uh, bring the mix down. And so that'll make it less obvious but I like it here. Now I'm gonna get the lens distortion node here, plug that there, and I'm gonna give a dispersion of, two, give it two clicks on the dispersion. So that's gonna give a, a nice, really cool dispersion effect. And then to make sure that these come out in the render, plug that there. And then we'll go back to rendering. We have this really cool audio visualizer effect that works really good with your music and you don't have to do all that extended animation modeling and all that crazy stuff. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something.